Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Monday. That means it's time for the Wrestling Inc. Monday Night Raw after show. And have we got a show for you. We've got tag team qualifiers, CM Punk returning, and Becky Lynch is the last woman standing. But before we get into all of that, Allow me to introduce the crew. I'm Jack Farmer being joined by Justin Labar. And who is that? It's John Jordan. John, first first voyage, at least in, in some time here on, on Raw. Happy to have you, pal. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, first first voyage on Raw. I, I did a, an NXT recap show with Glenn and Issa a couple weeks ago. Uh, I'm your fill-in guy. I'll be here every once in a while or as long as you'll have me. And uh, I'm happy to be here with you guys. I've been following you guys for a long time. Uh, and I have to say, I know that nobody can fill Jimmy's shoes, uh, but at least you got another J. And in my right. case, you got a JJ. And so I, I wore my, yeah. my Jeff Jarrett shirt. Today there we go. To uh, oh, kind of give a, a little nod to Jimmy, too. Uh, the fourth J is still here. I'll be the fourth. He's the third. Well, John, well, put, your, put yourself over. Let everybody know. You work with Wrestling Inc. You're like, it's not like you're just like pop out of nowhere. Like, put yourself over. Yeah, I've been, uh, I, I work at Wrestling Inc. Uh, on the writing side of things. I'm trying to bridge the gap a little bit between the editorial and the video side and whatnot. Uh, a lot of news writer, but uh, also a lot of features that I think are really cool uh, that I've had a hand in. Uh, some historic stuff uh, uh, from wrestling history. Um, I had a, a full-length interview with AJ Francis recently that's still up on the site and various cuts and, and whatnot. Um, I've got a new feature coming out on uh, what's what happened to uh, or what's going on with Victoria these days and a lot of other things, including our uh, recaps for our predictions for all the PLEs and pay-per-views of the year. And so far, we're doing good. Uh, we'll see how that goes as the year goes on. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Very, very good to have you. Uh, Justin, before I ask you how you're doing, John, it's your first show so, or, so with us, so I got to ask the tough question right off the bat. We're going to talk all about Cody Rhodes and everything else before going forward, but the show started with Pharaoh wearing a bandana that said The Rock is a cat. So I'm going to divide the fans on you right off the bat. Are you a dog person or a cat person? I have always been a dog person. I have a wonderful four-year-old German shepherd mix named Ziggy. Uh, but a couple of years ago, we inherited a neighborhood cat. He's 16. His name's Beans. I love them both, but I won't tell the cat because he's right around the corner over there. <laughs> I'm more of a dog guy. The, very good answer. I, have a, uh, I had a dog until recently. I have a cat too. So I've had both. And uh it's hard to hard to pick a side. I won't do it. I would never pick a side, John. I can't believe <laughs> yeah. you actually said it. Crazy. Right. <laughs> well, they accuse you of loving everything, right, Jack? That's what I get accused of. <laughs> uh, but Justin, how have you been, pal? Haven't haven't talked to you in a week. I'm good. I'm doing well. We're on the road to mania. It's an exciting time. Uh, so it's never a dull day uh, around. Uh, the Labar studio, so I'm, I'm doing well. And I am firmly a dog person. No, I don't screw with cats. By the way, to the <laughs> point of my, ni my nine-year-old, she is uh, she, she, she thinks it's fun. We have a wonderful dog, but she thinks it's fun to ask for a cat as well. And we are such, uh, we are s very, very good friends with some neighbors down the street. I mean, like, you know, they're very, to the point of when they go out of town, we know we're going to go over and we just we, we check on the cat, make sure the cat's OK. Well, I don't, but the wife and the kids do. <laughs> and I just say, I'm like, look, you have Mia. You guys can walk down the street at any point and, and you have Mia. That That's good enough. We, we, we don't need any cats in the house. We have Wilson. We have our dog. We're good. <laughs> cats. I don't know if cats are people, people, people either, but uh, but I love mine. I can't help it. I love them all. I love all my dogs. Of course, uh, in the chat, Mr. Meowpuss, go figure, says cats are the best um so uh uh that's not a, not a surprise there uh but um let's let's chat about some news now everyone uh, again mondays we're going through this new format where we're going to be a little bit more news heavy so uh we're going to talk about the news up front again like comment share subscribe let us know your thoughts and also let us know your thoughts on the news segments we're talking about here today uh, we're going to start with some news I think is pretty cool. Uh, WWE released the trailer for the Bray Wyatt Becoming Immortal uh, documentary that's coming out. Uh, Justin, I feel like this is something that just makes all the sense in the world. Uh, clearly an influential wrestler. We've got the whole story, essentially. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. Probably going to get a, make a ton of money or ratings. I don't know how they make money anymore, but a lot of people are going to watch it. I think a lot of people are going to love it. 
Uh, yeah, it's going to be heavily watched. Absolutely. Um, uh, it's going to be, I'm sure, not easy to watch it with a dry eye. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I mean, obviously Bray is a, Bray Wyatt's, the different iterations of his characters, you know, a supernatural element to it. So he was somewhat protected, like like they for many years tried to protect The Undertaker. And what I mean by that is, you know, it, it'll be cool from a fan standpoint to see some of the behind the scenes stuff that I'm sure they will show. I'm sure we'll see some some outtakes or some creative co- collaboration going on. You know, I, they filmed the Firefly Funhouse stuff, the original one here here in Pittsburgh. So I'm hoping that we're going to see that plus his wardrobe and, and mass were all designed here. So I'm hoping we'll see some behind the scenes stuff of that. So that'll be very cool. Obviously, number one, honoring the legacy and memory of of the man. Uh, and uh, that was powerful just when it came on and you saw his brother, when you saw, when you saw Bo Dallas uh, talking about him and quoting him, you know, just by the trailer alone, uh, you start to get goosebumps. So uh, heavily anticipating what's going to be very entertaining, captivating, and sad to watch. Yeah, John, it's now I, I'm a I'm excited for this. I think it's great that they're doing it. But every now and you know, I got to ask the provocative questions, and you're the new guy, so you're getting the provocative questions. <laughs> That's fair. Is it is it too soon for a Bray Wyatt documentary? Do we need to give it some breathing at time and, and give it time before we dive back into this, or is it, hey, let's let's do it? Everyone who worked with him is for the most part is still under contract. You can have them do these things and, and make something nice. What what say you? I don't think it's too soon. I think there's still quite a bit of a celebration of his life and his legacy that's going on to this day, as well as people that are still grieving. So while that is definitely going to be tough to get through, I mean, like Justin said, even the the trailers are hard to watch, right? It's still fresh. Uh, I think it might help with that process too. I would have to think that they probably had plans for a documentary anyway, because there's a ton of footage from just when he's coming back a a couple of years ago, right? but no, I, I think it's going to be good for people largely, and I think he deserves it. There's there's a quote in there that talks about, I think it was from Alexa Bliss, that he changed the industry. And in a lot of ways, his creativity did just that, to look at wrestling in a different way. Um, and that'll be his lasting legacy, ultimately, uh, aside from his work in the ring itself. Yeah, Bray Wyatt's one of those few people, we talk about star power or ratings and everything else, and everyone has their different ways of of judging things. But I've always said with Bray Wyatt, he's one of those people that no matter what he was doing, he got everybody talking about it, everyone invested in it. And there's very few people who are able to do that. And I look at like the the CM Punks, the uh, Mercedes Monets, the, uh, as far as current people go, you know, um, but his was so creatively different. It wasn't just because he was a star. It was like, what is he going to do? What's his plan? How's He would get people engaged in such different ways. But then you hear about the kind of person he was behind the camera. And almost it reminds me almost, uh, Justin, this is a weird comparison of Haku or Ming, how you've never heard anyone say he wasn't terrifying. Yeah. You never heard anyone say anything about Bray Wyatt that wasn't like he was the best guy in the world. And so it'll be great to hear these stories. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, to your question to John, I'll just kind of chime in if, if it's too if it's too soon. As long as you have the family's blessing, which you know, we saw all JoJo's in there. We obviously his brother's part of it. Uh, we saw his his father's interviewed and you know, his father's going into the Hall of Fame. So as long as the family is like, hey, you know, I mean if the family like really came to WWE and said, We're not ready to do this, we're still in heavy grieving mode, then I then I think you respect that. But if they if, if they say no, we want to start to talk about him and let's 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 do something to let us and his fans all all come together. Uh, it's absolute time to do it. And I and I still think that Bray goes into the Hall of Fame this year. I, I you know, I, I said before on Busted Open putting both his father and his uncle in both are very deserving to be in but to have them go in together as part of the u.s express which is not the most prominent of either of their careers in terms of gimmick wise but to put them in together to me that signals because it's you want to also then put in their son and and nephew respectively so i i i i think documentary was announced today that's coming on april 1st i think uh, up next, whether it's this week or next Monday, is the announcement of he's the final person in the class that gets that goes in this year. So some people today uh, were a little, I, they felt almost tricked by Triple H's tweet that was leading up, leading up to announcing this documentary, right? Because it sounded very much like what's happened before when a Hall of Fame inductee is announced. Uh, but I think you're right. Uh, and I think that would be only fitting. And if you remember uh, the clip of Triple H calling uh, Ray Wyatt's father and uncle, uh, obviously they were very happy to get you know, the call to get the news. And there was a lot of emotion in the last clip that you saw of Mike Rotunda, almost 
more so than just someone that just found out that they were going in as part of a tag team, if you know what I'm saying. So speculation mm-hmm. on my part, but I feel like that's coming. Yeah. And someone who totally deserves it too. Um, I mean, even if things were different, uh, I think he'd already done enough to be someone who deserves to go in the hall of fame just creatively. And someone who I think is such a visual aspect of when I envision so much of the past 10 years, he's so a part of it. You know, I, I don't think you could tell the story of the past 10 years without him. Uh, so I think, I think it's a good thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for it. Like, like Justin said, I think I'm going to be a, a wreck while I'm watching it, but uh, it'll be, it'll be good. I'm excited for it. Um, we got some bad news in the women's division. We got some stuff that maybe isn't uh, as fun to chat about, but it is news. And this is what we do. We talk about it. Uh, Raquel Rodriguez has been pulled from the internal rosters. Uh, for WWE, there's no official word as to why, but obviously the speculation is she has been dealing with some health issues. Uh, also, Asuka has reportedly suffered an injury, but we're still waiting on the severity of that. Uh, and we don't know if she will miss time or not. Uh, John, this is a uh, terrible timing, obviously, to be uh, dealing with health issues one way or the other. But obviously, health comes first. Absolutely. And uh, if you recall, uh, Raquel Rodriguez put out a tweet um, just ahead of Elimination Chamber about her road to recovery from what I believe is some sort of autoimmune disorder that, that causes all kinds of uh, awful and look, what looks to be painful skin reactions and such. And she battled back and she had a good showing at Elimination Chamber. So now to have this setback, it does really stink. Um, but like you said, there's no good time for it. WrestleMania season, a little more of a bummer for these performers, obviously, but health's got to come first. Um, as far as Oscar goes, again, we don't know the severity yet. Um, and I wonder what that means for whatever was going to be planned for the women's tag team titles at WrestleMania or before or wherever. Uh, but it also makes me wonder, you know, you've got Dakota Kai on that side too. Um, maybe they could, uh, you know, put the Kabuki Warriors name to the side and go by damage control and kind of give it a little free bird rule action. But, uh, first and foremost, hope everybody's doing as well as they can and heals well soon. Yeah, Justin, I know this on this show, we've sung the praises of Raquel Rodriguez many times, uh, and it's definitely a bummer that she may be gone for some time now. Of course, again, I mean, health comes first, Uh, but I think John has a good idea for the tag team championships. I think it'd be totally fine if they free bird ruled it. And that would probably be the best thing to do uh, if there are solid plans slated for for those for the tag titles in wrestlemania i mean i feel like the women's tag titles have just been cursed the last few years uh if it's not if it's not drama with one (laughs) and it's injury with the other or something so that the free bird rule probably would be a way to um not you know because you know you're dealing with the tag team so you're with one i always say this about tag teams when you live in the tag team world man uh if one person goes down that affects their partner and then that affects obviously uh, potential opponents, so that would be one way to do it. Um, so, you know, we'll see what the severity of that injury is. Uh, and then, yeah, with Raquel, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the performer and the person. Uh, you know, I, I that's a I don't think people realize, you know, to be to, to be dealing with anything, but to be dealing with something that she was dealing with, and then to do the flight that it is to Australia, <laughs> why, and then to go on a perform. I mean, like that's you know, and, and performing in a Nation Chamber match, not like you're just being told to go out there and do a five minute, you know cookie cutter match you're being put out there in a, in a pretty uh, unforgiving uh and, and physical gimmick match so you know hats off to her always with her toughness and but yeah hopefully she gets better um and can get back there as soon as possible most notably probably at this point you know the, the nights after mania when the, when the wb calendar resets you you'll want to be available because that's when everything starts that's when new stories start to develop so hopefully she's back and able to be ready uh for that time period um Speaking of WrestleMania and speaking of people who are going to be there, uh, there's apparently some news that some folks are a little upset with The Rock and some of the language he's been using, particularly because a memo was sent out saying that people aren't allowed to use bad language. It's still PG, don't you know? Uh, Justin, there's been some responses to this. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I feel like this is nothing. I feel like this is them trying to make The Rock look like, you you know what I mean? I feel like maybe a a memo was sent out, but I don't think anyone's really upset about it. Am I wrong here? Do you think there's something here or is this part of the story? This is, so this is to pull the curtain back to, to, to our audience. This is where 
reporting on the genre of pro wrestling is oh so tricky, right? Uh, when you're when you're when you're trying to report on on a genre that is built on secrecy and a lie, uh, it, it you know unless you are able to deal with PR communications people, it, it, this is stuff gets tough. And what I mean is, there probably was a memo sent out. There probably was a memo sent out uh, to some standards and practices degree of just hey, make sure we're minding our p's and q's. You know, it's a very well, we have a lot of eyes on us right now for good reasons and bad reasons. Um, in the company, so let's just you know, th- th- there might be a memo, but then when is oh, is the locker room the, the locker room making you if you know, if, if there's 60 people in the locker room, that's making it sound like the majority, so more than 30. That's when you run into the case of well, who was the source? It could be two wrestlers that are pissed off because they're just not seeing the booking time they want, and so they those two wrestlers happen to communicate to said person who then reports it on the internet. Man, you you ought to. Everybody's really pissed off around here, and 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 they and they they tell the story of 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 of, of unfairness, and and when really it's just maybe those two people, you know, the, when the when when actually the majority of the locker rooms like whatever, he's the freaking rock, he can do what he wants to do, and he's making us all, he's gonna help make us more more money and more attention. So, yeah, you really have to take these kind of stories uh, with the locker room is all upset with a real grain of salt of how the story came to be and who's the source anyways so yeah john i don't i i I agree with justin i feel like being a reporter in the wrestling industry is i always say it's i compare it to being a a reporter in the magic industry where the whole idea (laughs) is to is to trick and confuse people you know what i mean uh so this feels like it's an impossible job but at the same time i just i i i feel like i don't know i don't buy it what say you Absolutely. Many, many years ago, I worked in pro hockey and I had to learn the hard way because I took a, a little bit of an alternative route to get into those rooms and into those situations that not everybody can be trusted through and through, right, mm-hmm. uh, as a reporter. So um, I was also thinking, too, I mean, the way that this story came out, it kind of fits right into the way that this rock, the evolution of this rock character is headed, right? Make him Mm -hmm. look like he's getting away with something that not everybody else can make him look like he's getting special treatment. A lot of which would be forced by his own hand. If you know, the story that you're you're believing is true. Right. Uh, But also look at the Cody Rhodes promo, which I know we'll talk about later on tonight. He got away with some stuff. Right. So Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking the same thing and I had it written down. I don't know. I, I had my spidey senses up from the beginning on this one. And let me just clarify too, real quick, because I said that the, I believe, so I believe the, attribution to that report was to SC scoops. Uh, that's a website. I, I don't know much about them, so I'm not going to pretend, but that's also a thing. I don't know much about them. So I don't know, you know, when I say about wrestling reporting and, and not be, th- there are some people who are, do, who do really well. Like if, 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 if this is said, this is coming from fightful and Sean Ross Sapp, I would give it a whole lot more credibility because sean is not willing to leave with what he puts out if, if if he went with a story of the locker room i would damn now think that he tried his ass off to talk to the majority of the locker room if possible um but this wasn't him so i just want to clarify that i'm not throwing everybody in our wrestling news site business i'm not throwing everybody under the bus i'm just clarifying here right you know abs- absolutely too. yeah it's it's tricky but I don't know. We'll we'll see how it plays out. Uh, my favorite news of the weekend, the 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 stuff, that, the one that I was really excited to see is Shayna Baszler is going to be working GCW Bloodsport. She's going to be uh, facing Masha Slamovich in a match that I am now I- incredibly excited about. Uh, Bloodsport, of course, a very cool style of wrestling show. They're going to be part of GCW The Collective. Uh, John, do you follow uh, any of like the blood sports stuff or uh, Slamovich? Obviously, you know, Shayna Baszler. What are your thoughts on this idea of a WWE wrestler doing an indie show? I love it. I think it benefits everybody. I don't follow blood sport very closely, but I'm, I've been aware of it for several years. But I go back a long way following Shayna Baszler back to her MMA career. Huge fan. Uh, the way she was presented in NXT was was phenomenal through and through to me. Uh, And I feel like if you're not going to have, and maybe she will, I'm not sure, but if you're not going to have a primo spot at WrestleMania to be allowed to go and work other shows during WrestleMania, you know, WrestleMania times, WrestleMania weekend, um, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, 
it, it benefits everyone. Like I said, uh, Masha Slamovich is a name that's out there in the Indies. Everybody, a lot of people know of her. Uh, it's a fantastic exposure on that side, but also for WWE, right? Like Shayna Baszler, big name. They get to put the logo on a promotion for Bloodsport, right? Like it, it works for everyone. And I love collaboration like that in this industry. Yeah, it's uh, Bloodsport. I, I think it's such a cool thing and um, not because... Fun, fun little self plug here. I'm going to be doing commentary for Defy Wrestling, which is kicking off GCW The Collective. So if you watch the whole slate, you'll get to hear me doing commentary before the big blood sport thing. But Justin, this is clearly, there's a lot to unpack here beyond just Shayna Baszler doing a, an indie show. Uh, this is a show that AEW wrestlers are on. This is a, also just different for WWE in general, letting their wrestlers wrestle elsewhere. Uh I'm just. I'm gonna let you unpack a little bit. What are your thoughts on this? Well, and and Shane's opponent, her her opponent's uh, under contract with TNA right now, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, I mean, look. Yeah. First off, for wrestling fans, it's exciting, right? The whole forbidden door, you know, gimmick. Um, look, I Triple H certainly. We know this about him. He, you know, he is not a. He's. It's not in his policy to act like. WWE is the only thing that exists that uh, they're, they're, they're the only company in the world that has uh, a, a square wrestling ring, right? He, he acknowledges other things are there. And, and so I'm not surprised this happened. I think this was, you know, I'm not surprised. Um, I think when you're dealing with something like Bloodsport and, and like John, I don't follow it very closely. I know I've, I've seen clips and heard about it from the previous years, but I think it's enough of an alternative. It's like, okay, well, obviously these, this is not going to be any kind of direct competition that's going to be popping up on a major you know, network rival, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, if, if Raw's moving to Netflix, this isn't going to Hulu same time and going to be competing or anything like that. You know what I mean? I think it's a, it's something, it's a healthy alternative that, that, you know, they're okay. Maybe having a little bit of support of and what have you. It's cool for the fans. I I, I don't know what to expect long-term if we're going to see, you know, a high volume of this kind of, you know, WWE lending their talent out because at the end of the day, it comes down to the talent is their investment, right? The talent, the, the, the entire WWE runs on the talent. And so while it is very cool and very exciting, I will say this. If you are a huge Shayna Baszler fan, very exciting that you can probably pay, uh, you know, a lower ticket price than you would WrestleMania. You can pay a lower ticket price and go see Shayna in, in an intimate, cool setting and environment. Um, but if you're also, I would say, if you're a hardcore Shayna Baszler fan, if she's doing this on that Thursday WrestleMania weekend, to me, I'm like, all right, well, they're not investing any significant time or match of her at WrestleMania just on just common sense of, well, what if she got hurt? two mm -hmm. nights before and, and we've spent all this tv time and investment so like that's the one thing i'll say is while it's cool to see potential crossover and door swinging different ways wwe is still going to always operate with a mindset of like we, we can't afford to have you hurt on somebody else's time so i'm not expecting Shayna baszler to have any significant role in wrestlemania and that's and, what makes and, me think you know sorry justin that's no. that's what makes me think that this is something that's made her happy, right? She knows the situation yeah. most likely, right? If you don't have anything for me, hey, I train with Josh Barnett. He's got this idea. What do you think? And it, that's why I think it's great that they're letting her do it. You know, It's a positive out of a perceived negative. Correct, yeah. And you're probably, that's, what, that's what I was going to finish with, which is she probably didn't have any significant Mania thing lined up anyways. So it, it's probably, yeah, it probably just gives her at least some, some attention on Mania Week uh, in Philadelphia regardless. Bernie DC saying, yeah, probably why they did Zoe and Shayna's tag title match against the Kabukis earlier on March on Raw. Uh, yeah, Bernie, I, the Caps just won. We're officially in the playoffs at the moment. I, I think uh, I think they it happened, Justin, because of the the colors you're wearing. I think you you're helping them through. <laughs> that's all it took, Jack. That never <laughs> works for me with my teams. <laughs> if that's all it took, I I would sunburn myself until I'm red like. <laughs> that's what it took. <laughs> uh but yeah i i'm, I'm glad to see shade of it i think what's great too just to put a cap on it is that uh it gets more eyes on more wrestlers uh because people are going to tune in i think it probably help more people watch that by that show also people like slamovich who i feel like has been knocking on the door of a network tv contract uh for a while now i think it lets, lets us see what she looks like in there with someone from the wwe uh, it also helps get attention to TNA. I feel like it just it it helps everybody. So I think it's a really cool thing. Uh, One last thing I yeah. will say that this is just a random thought. I also wonder too with WWE um, moving even more into the uh, streaming space, 
with Raw going to Netflix, and then, of course, we're all going to wait and see what's going to happen with the network and Peacock once that deal expires in a few years. Part of me does wonder, like, by reaching out and, and, and potentially doing a little work, work relationship with, like I said, a true alternative, like, 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 like this, like GCW and Bloodsport in general, is it is it testing the waters of can we do business? Can we get along with you behind closed doors to the point of where we would acquire you, let you still keep your name and identity, but we need more content. We we need more original content in the ring content for streaming. Obviously, WWE has a tape library a million miles long, but if they want to still have even more content, it's like all right, we're already doing Raw, NXT, and SmackDown, and a and a PLE once a month. We can't produce any more under the WWE banner with the WWE talent and WWE creative. But if we have this other alternative that that's not a direct competition, is that something they would be setting up for? Possibly. In today's day and age, you can never have too much content. I mean, I right, think I, right. when, when NBC la- launched Peacock, they had all of NBC and they still were like, oh, we need to add something else to this. So yeah. um, can never have too much. Well, let's oh, I guess real quick, uh, Jericho also had mentioned just uh, real quick thoughts. John, we'll start with you. Had mentioned that he never thinks about retirement and he may possibly go back to WWE. This feels like why wouldn't you keep that door open? I mean, he's a smart businessman. And also, why would he consider retirement? He's still rocking and rolling. Well, rocking and rolling is, uh, you know, uh, that's up to the individual to uh, to describe it as such. Uh, I, 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 there was one quote that stuck out there, and all due respect to Jericho, his legacy in the business is cemented, right? Uh, but he said something along the lines of, I can still put on the best match on any show at any given time. There's some people that would tell you that the last few weeks have been a little bit rough. I will say on the positive side that, yes, I, I feel like you'll definitely see him in the WWE in some way again, even if it's just for the Hall of Fame uh, at some point, which he in the past has said he doesn't really care about very much. I don't believe him. I don't believe anybody when they say that. Everybody wants their recognition. Everybody wants to be validated. Everybody wants to be fulfilled, right? Um, and also, if you notice, again, another credit to Triple H uh, r- recognizing other companies, even in a non-naming type of way. Uh, if you notice recently in a uh, highlight package talking about Gunther's Intercontinental title reign, uh, Chris Jericho was shown recently um, with the IC title, which uh, a while back he wasn't. He was you know, uh, noticeably absent from that. So yes, you keep the doors open. I think we all expect that at some point. Uh, and I'd love to see it too, because I do have a ton of respect for what he's done in his career. Yeah, Justin, I feel like... I, I... Everyone, come on! Everyone wants to be in the, the Hall of Fame. Who who doesn't? But also, why would you turn down the potential to be on like Legends contracts, things well, like that, that? I mean, ex- come on! Exactly. This is this, this is a guy. For, first off, he's trying to he's trying to, I mean, and, and 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 I would be doing the same thing if I was him, right? He's in his early fifties, right? He's I think he's in his fifties at the point. He's trying to. You want to you want to ink as many AEW contracts from billionaire Tony as you can, but you also know. You want to go in the Hall of Fame for nothing, nothing else, like you said, Jack. Because when you go to the Hall of Fame, that usually means you got some kind of legends or licensing deal of merchandise, of royalties for for video game. You, oh, oh, we're going to lock you in the next video game. So, like he's he doesn't want that contract, which that basically follows you until you die. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you don't want to not, not have that to cash it on. And look, I, I I I've been a Jericho fan for most of his career, for the, and for the most part. This is a guy who's wrote, written multiple books already in his career of his about his career. This is a guy that also moonlights as a rock star. He loves the stage. He loves any type. I mean, and, and again, he's entertaining and has done a lot. So I'm not I'm not knocking him. I would again be doing the same, if not even more obnoxious. Mm-hmm. But you can't tell me I don't believe in that statement of uh, the, the Hall of Fame's not important. No, you're right. you're, you're, you're he he'd be the one that probably says in my headlining. <laughs> right. <laughs> when they ask right. Him. Well, hey, that's can, uh, can Fozzie play me to the podium? <laughs> well, and that's that's the thing too is he's a smart business person too. So yeah. you got to play coy. You can't be like, oh my god, that's all I want. You got to be like, I don't know. Do I want to join the? What What are you going to offer me to go in the Hall of Fame? You know, you right. got to you got to play coy. He's a smart he's a smart fella. You have to be to be in this business that long and uh, that business. He, this long. he absolutely knows what he's doing. And I should also say, if I came across negatively up front there, that. The one time that I met Chris Jericho at random at a Bruce Springsteen concert, he was very, very nice to me. We hung out for a few minutes. So cheers. Chris. There's a great story. I'm going to throw it out here. Uh, other host on the show, Flobo Boyce. Next time you get him on here, have him tell you his Fozzie story. It's a good one. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm a huge Jericho fan too. But let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about Monday Night Raw. Let's talk about what happened today. But before we do, as always, 
I like to go through a rundown. If you're here at the show, like, comment, share, subscribe. But if you're in the chat, like Dylan Matthews, Ricky Zaldivar, Lego Brick Collector, Laura Rock, Daniel Barry, Stephen Camp, Tommy, oh, Brian Milligan, Rocky, but by a, I never know how to say your last name, Rocky, but uh, you know I, I love you. Uh, Killer of Demons, Kenny, Ethan Cruz, Pronouns, Pal, Mr. Meowpuss, Jacob, MDB, Bill, Blue Chew, Carman, Mike Rouse. We got a lot of folks here. Baby Ice, Maria, Noah, Matthew Tech, Jimmy Corderas. Speaking of Hall of Fame, he's going to get his nod soon, and one of us is going to induct him whether he likes it or not. Uh, King Kia, we're going to go up there. They're like, who's inducting Jimmy Corderas? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but we also got Tuck Graff, Mark Smith, Shannon Miles, and everyone else. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And of course, Shout out to the lurkers just hanging out, not saying anything. We still appreciate you. Let's talk about the main event. We're going to start with that one. Becky Lynch versus Nia Jax, last woman standing. We get promos from both of them before the match uh, throughout the show. Mo this is mostly Nia Jax just beating the tar out of Becky Lynch in this one before Becky Lynch does some WWE 2K24 style offense to get the win uh john this becky lynch i'm always tough on becky lynch but i always say man when it comes to the big matches she delivers every time she's great i love this one what did you think she delivers there were some wild spots there uh but it takes two to tango and i wrote down as a the one note that i took away from this is doesn't it say a lot and maybe 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 i'm reading too much into this but doesn't it say a lot about nia Jax? that this close to WrestleMania, you put her in there in a last minute, last woman standing match with Becky Lynch and all those weapons and all those wild spots and they take care of each other and they pull off an amazing match and how far she's come uh, in this latest run in WWE. I think she's been great and I think she deserves credit. Becky Lynch, absolutely, 100% agree with you, Jack. But I think Nia Jax should not be overlooked and that stuck out to me. Yeah, Justin, my, that was my one negative about this one is I feel like Nia Jax deserves something for WrestleMania. Well, uh, so I agree with everything John said. You know, Nia gets a ton of heat from wrestling fans, which is what she's supposed to do, by the mm -hmm. way. It's what she gets paid what? to do. She does her job very well. And, uh, you know, obviously she is the most physically imposing female on the roster. Uh, it, it's a female roster that... Um, has a ton, well, I'm not gonna say a ton, but there's more good guys, there's more faces than there are real credible, credible being the key word heels. She's top of the heap of that. And so I was kind of torn. The, the match was very entertaining. I was torn because I'm watching the match. I'm like, all right, well, you, you're not, you're 19 days from Mania. You're not gonna have Becky Lynch lose this match, especially when it's a gimmick match to where she, you don't have to. You're, you're not even pinning Nia. You're 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 using the perception of of the, of, the, of whatever weapons and and she couldn't get up from the ten count. So like Becky's not losing when she's 19 days away from challenging Rhea. But then the other part of me is like, man, Nia Jax. She she should have something at Mania, or if at, if not Mania, again, she should be a focal point of the division moving forward. And like I, they had the interaction at Rumble. Like I think I think she's the perfect first long term opponent for for Jade Cargill. So part of me is like, you know, God, wouldn't it be great if have Becky win? Becky celebrates, but then Nia somehow rises above the rubble and just starts to beat the you know what out of Becky, just pummeling her. And she's been Nia's been beating up the girls backstage and she's been kind of causing chaos lately. Anyways, what if Jay's music hits and Jay just stares down? It's like, all right, here we go. Now we now we have like a, a mania match that doesn't have a title, but it has you know, Nia trying to be dominant and Jade's coming in. And of course, that's a perfect situation because everybody's going to cheer Jade. There's going to be no indifference there. They didn't do it tonight. Doesn't mean they couldn't still do it. We are running short on time. But that also could be that scenario of some such could be what they do just after Mania. That could be in the, in the, in the reset of the calendar. Nia's doing great work. She deserves something. But Rhea, obviously, I guess, is your or, uh, Becky's your priority because she's challenging Rhea. Um, a lot of energy going off the off the air with Rhea and Becky face to face. The biggest trick here is. They're still booking Becky, you know, the man as the, you know, defiant baby face. If you did some polling, I think more people care to cheer Rhea right now than they care to cheer Becky. So that's going to be interesting how that plays out the next 19 days. Yeah, that was going to be what I was going to say to you, John, is we have I, – I agree with, with 
Justin, I listened to that crowd and there were a lot of mommy chants happening. And this was after a really big underdog win from Becky is, is Rhea Ripley just too big a force of nature right now, as far as how fandom goes to get anyone to boo her. I, I think so. And I think I've heard you guys say it before on here and others as well. Uh, it, her time in uh, association with the Judgment Day is, is is just limited at this point, right? She's she's almost too big for that, which I thought was, was what you were going to say. Uh, I have all eyes on this match at Mania uh, looking for how they adjust in the match from the entrances all the way on through. I think it's, it's prime for, uh, you know, it's not like a, an organic double turn, so to speak, but it's one of those situations where the way it's being booked leading up to it is not exactly probably going to be the way it plays out. And I think that's going to be fantastic, but you've got two pros who let's get serious. They've probably talked about this already and are anticipating something like that. I think they're going to make some magic happen. Becky always delivers at WrestleMania. And again, I, I know it, for people who watch the show, I'm kind of, I'm usually pretty tough on Becky Lynch because I expect the best from her. Mm -hmm. uh, but Stephen Camp also says Mania, Becky and Rhea will switch places. Heel Becky face Rhea. I, I get it, Justin, but just to, I guess, to wrap this up. Last time Becky was a heel, I feel like none of us really bought it that much. And we were always waiting for her to go face again. W would it work for her to, to turn? Well, I don't know long. You're right. I don't know long term. Again, as I said earlier, they have, they have they have more faces than they do credible heels, so they could use her credibly on the heel side of the yard. But I don't know long term if that's what the fans want. But it just in this right now, I think more people want to cheer Rhea. So I I, I think they, you know, as as John was alluding to, I think Rhea and Becky and 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 the office are probably gonna have to go into this with some plan when the match comes, night one or night two. Of okay, if we get out there, and this crazy ass philadelphia crowd if they like really are healing becky how are we gonna let, let's let's act accordingly right let's let's not be tone deaf let's let's give them what they want um part of that's also going to deter be determined on well what's the finish who's mm -hmm. going over right i, I mean it's if, if you follow any bit of me you know that's my mommy. I'm real all day, every day. I don't think there's anybody that's believable to me right now on the roster that's positioned to take the title off of Rhea. I think Rhea, go, Rhea should go into Mania still as champion as champion, and walks out still as champion. So part of it is also the finish, too. If, 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 if Becky's not winning, then that, that's much easier to also just lean into whatever the crowd's going to do. If they're expecting there to be a ticker tape parade of Be Becky beating Rhea, <laughs> there might be some problems that you might need to address. So. It's also, it's also Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was going to uh, say, Jack, the, the other thing, too, is like, and I'm not putting these on the same level, so don't take this the wrong way. But if you remember, one of the what, what a lot of people look at is one of the most iconic double turns in wrestling history, Rock Hogan at 18, right? Mm -hmm. That happened. They played the crowd. They worked it the way they needed to work it. And then the next night, it's not as if everything was completely upside down and things were flipped. It's a gradual thing. And sometimes you can go back to you know your previous incarnation uh, for the most part afterwards. So, uh, again, like I said, I think no matter what they've got, a, a it's a really good problem to have leading up to many. It's going to be one of my favorite ones to watch. Yeah. Uh, well, John, I'm going to throw this question to you. Super chat. Chad W asks, does Becky cheat to win turning heel while Rhea becomes a face and leaves the judgment day? Uh, it's gotta be all the way correct or it's wrong. Is it, is, <laughs> is that, is that a correct guess or a wrong guess? He's really putting my feet to the fire on my first Raw uh, after show, right? I, again, I don't think it needs to be as clean cut as that, right? I, and I think it can still happen gradually after Mania, especially uh, in terms of Rhea and Judgment Day. Even though I said I think she's probably too big for that group at this point, I think there's probably, you know, they huddle up all the time and they have these backstage segments. There could be a celebration uh, on the, the Raw after Mania with Judgment Day and some people won and some people lost and who knows what happened with Priest in his briefcase and whatever else. Uh, and we, we might see him fizzle after that. And on the other side of things, I don't think Becky necessarily needs to cheat to win. She might mid-match resort to some, you know, subtle heel tactics, right? Just to, you know, because depending on how the crowd goes. Um, but I don't think it needs to be as clean cut as that. That's just the way I look at it. And if Rhea retains, if Rhea leaves Mania still champion, and I do agree, they probably have to start to <clears throat> distance her from Judgment Day. I, I've continued to throw out the idea of, what would really cement the Rhea as now a babyface 
is if Dirty Dom does her dirty. If we find out a little Dirty Dom is two timing her and he's he's sneaking around with some other chick, that would be. But what have Rhea retain, and then if Rhea retains, and if you are committed to booking her now as the face, she doesn't have to change much of her character. Everything can stay the same. The only difference is now her opponents are are heels, and now you have a and, and now you have fresh that that's fresh stories. That's fresh material for her. So I. I Unless Rhea's asked for time off, or unless Rhea had, uh, you know, unless she was injured, or, or unless something like that, which I don't know of any of that, but unless something like that where you needed to honor her personally, I would not take the title off her. I see no reason. The people are not over it. She's been champion for a year. She won it last year at Mania. She's been champion for a year, and it does not, there's no fatigue to the audience. No. That is, that is an incredible accomplishment in this day and age when there's as much WWE program as there is every week. So if they're not fatigued, and as long as she's healthy and can keep can keep going, keep it going. And to that point, to be fair, she's kind of been like Roman in that she doesn't really have many matches either. But no one is calling her out the way they call out Roman either. Correct. They're they're all just incredibly happy about it. So she she has more house show matches than she does TV matches, mm-hmm. which that's 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 an awesome formula because that because you know she's helping. She's helping draw the towns, as the slang would, the old wrestling slang is, but they're not diluting her on TV. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a great formula, and if you can get away with it without being called out on it, keep rolling with it. Yeah, Shano seventeen says once Rhea dumps Dom, she's going to be the biggest baby face in the company, and No Way says Rhea beats Becky, who's left for Rhea, and Justin, I think you answered that really well. I think that covers it. Um, we also had to start the show. Jay Uso came out and he called out Jimmy, uh, solo and Jimmy both arrive. Jay wants Jimmy to come back to him, but Jimmy says Jay is the one that left. Jimmy says he protected Jay and that Jay's biggest moment is because of Jimmy. Jay says the biggest moment will be beating Jimmy at 40. Things get physical. And once Jimmy and solo get the upper hand, Cody comes out and cleans house. Uh, later Adam Pierce is upset. Paul Heyman apologizes for them being there. He's going to be back later with some more stuff. Uh, Justin, I want your thoughts on this opening segment and really Jimmy Uso. I mean, we were talking about how good Jay is on the mic. I felt like Jimmy Uso, he he knocked it out of the park. They all did. I'm glad they put this up front. Uh, this is um, this is a big deal. Uso versus Uso. This has got a lot of history to it, not just with the bloodline the last couple of years, but obviously this is uh, the Usos are right there with. Miz and Natty in terms of the longest tenure talent without any, you know, well, we released you for a little bit or whatever. And he, and even without a lot of injury time out. So they've been around. So to see them, to see identical twins have a match at mania is going to be something, you know, Michael, I, Michael Cole talked about how we've had Brett versus Owen. We've had Matt versus Jeff Hardy. Uh, didn't give a shout out to Taker versus Kane, so I guess they're that kills that brothers. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're right. Oh my god, they ruined they ruined oh, it all. No. F you mania 14. Um Santa isn't real. You know, well, but I, you, I, I hope they know. I hope they didn't find out tonight themselves, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you have identical twins, and, and 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 I don't mean to sound like a like a like a I don't know, like a simpleton, but seriously, this is a visual business. When you say we're gonna have the two identical twins have a match at WrestleMania. That creates some question marks of like, is the audience going to know who's who? But they've done a really good job. Of, of they, they've both changed up little bits of their look. And, they, you know, tonight Jimmy was wearing black. Jay had white on, traditional kind of good guy, bad guy, cowboy kind of stuff. It's going to be a good match. And the story's there. I'm excited for it. It's kind of under the radar. It's kind of buried, quite honestly, because obviously within the bloodline realm, everything is being dominated with, with Rock, Roman, and Cody um so and then there's a lot of other matches going on so this is it's kind of being buried so i'm glad that they started off tonight with that because this is going to secretly sneak in there and be very good you know these two brothers who love each other are going to just go ham to the wall with each other uh and then oh by the way solo is there and and because solo is not presented as such but just for again for fans who don't know pull the family tree up solo is their brother solo is the younger brother of jimmy and jay uso so who knows where his allegiance could lead if they wanted to spice things up this is really good i'm excited um i don't know how much more they're gonna have to do in this build up again because there's so many other moving parts of the bloodline but again this might secretly try to steal whatever night of mania they're on this might try to steal the night because these two guys have wanted this for a long time and they're gonna do it they're gonna give it 
to the audience and to the company, and it's uh, it's gonna be special. I love that, Justin. You're like, yeah, they really love each other, so they're gonna beat the hell out of each other. <laughs> no, no, but no, but, but but real life, Jack, real quick. I I, yeah. I, I, I probably on the podcast with you because you and I've been doing this for so long now. Back when, uh, whatever the last time Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens were opposite of each other when they weren't best friends. I've said this before, and I, and I have a little. I could say this a little bit from having just worked in some matches with 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 guys and girls. When you are close with somebody in real life, mm -hmm. the trust factor is at an all time high. So you do things that you maybe wouldn't have done with somebody else. You, you perform it away because there's timing and there's just a connection. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens have that. We've seen mm -hmm. that. Go back and watch other matches. These two are brothers that came out of the womb within minutes of each other. They have the ultimate amount of trust to each other. So just think about what that's going to mean in terms of what they're willing to go out there and do athletically with each other. It's I'm really excited for it. John, The uh, there's a story going around about Rikishi uh, chatting about this one, and people are wondering if Rikishi is going to be involved. Uh, we also have in the chat Stephen Camp asking, will Solo be a special referee? Uh, I want your thoughts on this segment, on this building rivalry, and if we might see some other names come in and be involved in this one. Well, I'll try to hit all of those things and make another point. When uh, Justin mentions the, the closeness factor of brothers getting after it and really laying into each other, or people that are your most trusted friends in wrestling, I've never taken a bump in my life, right? But I still play hockey. And when I play against my best friends in our uh, quote-unquote recreational men's league, you, you bet you're behind that there's some extra wax and things like that when uh, – not trying to hurt anybody, but you're just trying to, uh, you know, make it look good, right? Especially if we have anybody that shows up and watches us. Uh, okay. As far as Solo being a special ref, uh, unless The Rock is going to place him in there, who's going who's gonna to make that happen? How are you going to make that work storyline-wise? I think he'll be involved, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, – and then as far as Rikishi goes, I'm actually surprised, a little surprised, that we haven't seen or heard from him too much – uh, to this point, and not at all on WWE TV, right? In this whole saga of the bloodline, uh, maybe on social media a little bit here and there, but now we've got his boys getting at each other. And if there was ever a time, and I believe he teased it recently uh, in a tweet mm -hmm. or something like that, uh, this would be the time, right? Uh, listen, if my two sons were getting after it with each other, for sure I would be there. And I might interject myself into the situation if need be. Um, I think this one, and I know other people have said this, and it's probably too early to speculate on match order, but A, this doesn't need as much build because of the inherent you know, quality of, you've got Jey Uso against Jimmy Uso, Uso here. These guys have been around forever, uh, and mm -hmm. everybody knows. They called it a dream match, and I'm glad that, that those words were used tonight. It reminds people of how big it is, right? Um, but I think it might be primed for an opener for one of the nights. And I don't know what you guys think about that, but talk about setting the place on fire right away. I mean, you know they're going to get after it. I love John mentioning the hockey too, and I, so I'll bring it back. That's, that's, that, 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 that hits my heart. It's awesome. I'll give I'll give you my wrestling, my my personal experience. One of the closest people I that I have worked with in the ring, in the wrestling business. Uh, we were on a we were on a, a Saturday night uh, of internet pay per view of a big event in Cleveland in front of three thousand people. They're the only person who I've let do something to me, which resulted in me having quite the mark. <laughs> on my forehead the next day the next day was significant because the next day i was in ocean city maryland and i proposed to my now wife so all of our engagement photos have this and right. she knows who gave me this and then we went to the person who gave me this we went to his wedding 15 months later because i was there at his wedding because i was that close to him that's the kind of thing that i'm talking about and that's just my 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 level so then going yeah. to jimmy and jay uso who are from arguably the most famous wrestling family now and just yeah. put it in perspective of trust and just go ahead and watch it yeah i think they're gonna tear it down it's gonna be fun uh john i, I i'm gonna put you on the hot seat again uh bernie dc had mentioned uh the brother battles with a 10 25 and 40 uh, i think that's not counting undertaker versus kane um so he asks Brutus versus Julius at Creed, <laughs> Creed Mania 55. Is it going down? Yes, 100%. Book it. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go with Julius in the upset, avoiding the Brutus <laughs> ball because he's going to know it's coming. And he's going to pull off one of those feats of strength that they do. He's going to catch him midair and 
chuck them, you know, sideways. <laughs> That's yeah. Put money in the bank right there. No pun so intended. We'll see you guys in 15 years to <laughs> like, make sure that you were, whether you were right or wrong, we're going to hold you to it. Be sure you tune into this podcast. We'll be doing the after show. <laughs> 15 <laughs> years later. Uh, Jack will, Jack's hair will look better than ever. <laughs> and we'll have a little more gray in the beard, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have it. Uh, I'll have the uh, the fake stuff by then, so it'll be stuck the way it is. Uh, Cody, though, he came out. He saved Jey Uso. That started his night off. Um, he cuts a promo later in the night about The Rock, and he's using the insider terms. He's uh, talking about what The Rock is doing behind the scenes. He, he talks about how tough his mom is. He says he may not finish the story. Then Paul Heyman comes out, and we basically get sold on the idea that we're going to get the Roman Reigns-Cody Rhodes stare down with no one else involved on SmackDown. Uh, Justin, everyone's trying to talk uh, Cody Rhodes out of doing this thing next week. Uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit about something that we've talked about on another after show uh, here on this channel. Using insider terms, using behind the scenes stuff for the shows. Do you think that maybe Cody Rhodes is going a little too inside baseball for this kind of promo? Or is did you like that he was talking about insider terms and backstage stuff? What did he really say? He used the word, he mentioned how, he mentioned the word heel, uh, and which a lot of fans know it in 2024, but if he didn't, but if, but if you, but if you didn't, if you were a young kid who doesn't, you know, he then said that means bad guy. Uh, you know, he used a phrase when he was saying, oh, we don't need the rock. Look at this house. Well, this house, meaning look at the arena, look at the amount of tickets we sold. Um, I, I don't think that he, no, it was not. It, 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 you know, no, it was not a, it was not a, it was not to the point where nobody else could comprehend it. It, it was still comprehended. I, I think, quite honestly, and then him talking about the TKO board stuff. Again, that's not that secretive. That's not that inside baseball. Mm -hmm. When your company's public, and CNBC spends time each week talking about your company, and its board members and its stock. You know, that's not that inside baseball. You know, I mean, it, you know, it. it so I, I thought, look, going into this tonight, I thought this was the most important promo and response that Cody Rhodes had to give in his career. He just had one of the biggest stars in entertainment, not just pro wrestling, but entertainment, cut one of the most scathing promo. There was the director's cut of what Rock put on social, of the eight minutes where he's dropping F-bombs and he's like, graphically talking about the blood that's going to be in this belt he's going to hand to Cody's mom. There was the director's cut, and then there was the pair down for SmackDown cut that he does later that night. I mean, he just completely verbally punks out Cody. So I need to see, tonight, I needed to see Cody. If Cody would have gone out there tonight, grabbed that mic and the, did the whole, which I, and, I, and I, I love Cody. I love you, Cody, but I hate this. I hate this. I hate the... So what do you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. I am so glad he did not do that tonight. What the frick do you think we want to talk about? I'm so glad he didn't do that tonight. He came out there and he was authentic. He was relatable. He defends his mother. He says, oh, you want to talk? And he tells a story about his mother beating up a cop. And, and I, I don't got to defend my mom. My mom can handle you. Go ahead and try her. So he 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 defended the yo mama aspect of it, um, you know he he was believable, but he had fire, you know from the from the you know you're not you're not a heel you you're not a bad guy to win you're just a you're an a hole, like that hit. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're you're playing politics. You're just a carny b word. Mm -hmm. Hit that. You're you're not the head of the table. You're not the. You're just Roman side. I mean, he shut everything down. He was believable. He sounded like a guy who, if you at this point, if you mess with him, he he, he he's 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 gonna he's gonna fight you. Like I, I thought he did everything he could while not going too crazy. He still has to be the believable and lovable baby face that the kids can cheer for too. You can't scare the kids. You still you, you have to. You, so he walked a very fine line of. Three grown men, we could all, I think, say, okay, that dude handled his business, defended his family, but we could also say that all three of our kids could still look up to him as uh, the superhero role model. 
he walked mm-hmm. a very fine line. I always say Cody Rhodes is one of the, the top three in the game right now for selling me a ticket. I thought he did a great job tonight, John. But the problem I had, again, I'm going to throw you the, this one here. If you had just watched this episode, this this event, the main event is Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. But this promo sounded a lot more The Rock versus Cody Rhodes. Is Are we missing the big picture with some of this? Are we getting too sidetracked with The Rock? Well, he's. He, I think Cody addressed that though very well. He called him uh, an obstacle. He called him. Uh, uh, he's complicating things. There's something in the way. There's a distraction, right? Which almost belittles this established Hall of Famer, uh, you know, Mount Rushmore type that The Rock is, and it adds to um, the effectiveness of Cody's promo tonight as well. Which, to Justin's point, yeah, he he put a lot of spice in there. He had a lot of fire in in his promo tonight, but he stayed composed the whole time which is great. You could argue that, yeah, he threw in, uh, and it was a carny succubus. He called him a B word later. He got all these terms in. And I think as far as the kids go, I might have to explain to uh, at least my oldest who was up watching with me at that time, what LDS is, but uh, that's okay. (laughs) We can, we can, we can get through that. You have that big boy conversation sometimes. Um, (laughs) There's the birds and the bees and then there's LDS. Yeah. Right. (laughs) I mean, he saw the big Dwayne Energy commercial. He knew what he was the play the play he was uh, putting on there. So it'll be an easy explanation. I also like that he name dropped Brian Gewertz about the uh, yeah. uh, the final, final boss, boss bit. Yeah. I'm not mm-hmm. giving him credit for that at all. It's just I thought it was great. I thought it was one of, one of Cody's best. I had to watch it twice because I had to put up the article on Wrestling Inc. for it actually, and it was better the second time. So that says something. I love, I, I, like I said, I, I, for me, my dollar, I think only Paul Heyman does a better job at selling me a ticket right now than, than Cody. So you good company there, but Justin, last thing on this, Tommy dreamer, your, uh, your good pal busted open radio says he doesn't think the story gets finished this year. He doesn't see it. Do you agree uh, with Tommy dreamer? I know it, we're a little bit of ways before predictions, but yeah, that was a news article. Do you, uh, do, you do you believe him? If I had, if, if somebody told me you got to put a Ben Franklin down, if I had to bet a hundred bucks on the finish of night two, I'm betting that Cody wins, but I'm not betting with a big smile on my face. I, I, I still, it, and this is great for the suspense, right? I still think it feels 50, 50 because there are so many other factors that like make you go, oh, maybe he doesn't let's keep the title. We have this amazing streak going with Roman. Let's keep it going. Hey, he, he, if, if he gets past September, whatever, he passes Hogan. And so in modern history, that's a big deal. Uh, and oh, by the way, Rock's probably not completely done. He probably resurfaces at some point. So do you want the Rock challenging Roman for the title? Um, like there's there's enough factors that make you go, damn, man, maybe Cody doesn't do it again here this year. Um, I think he does. I think the grand plan is here is that, that Cody's going to like, Lose night one, have to fight the bloodline rules, somehow does it in night two, and it's like the greatest mountain has been climbed and accomplished, and, and he's been put over by Roman, by Rock, by everybody. Like, and and, and then, like, so I, I, I think, but you know, Tom and, and Tommy and I have had some conversations, uh, on the air and off the air, and he's not, I don't, I don't think he's crazy for saying what he's saying. It's, it's, it's mm-hmm. not a guarantee. And, and then, oh, by the way, and this is, this is funny because it, ble- it bleeds into Cody's promo. Yes, Rock is, is a member of the board, the TKO board. This is the TKO board. This is their first WrestleMania. What they know from business metrics is Roman's been the champion for the last three years. This stuff's been doing pretty good. That's a real thing. And then, oh, by the way, oh, oh we can keep the title on Roman. And then Rock, you could challenge him at said event. So, like, that is all real. That is all mm-hmm. real. Like, even if Triple H stands up and Triple H has control of day-to-day creative, WWE, even if Triple H says, oh, guys, Cody's our babyface. We need him making the towns. We need him as champion. We need him. I got Punk injured. I got Seth needs time off. I got Charlotte injured. But still, he Triple H does not have the power to, to, to circumvent all of them. So, I mean, it's a real thing that I'd say it's still 50-50 of, like, hmm, does Cody finish the story? tune in that's what makes it exciting uh we have a similar situation here with drew mcintyre calling out 
uh, Seth Rollins for also being um, distracted by the bloodline. And Seth Rollins says he's taking it very seriously. Another fiery promo, John, between these two. Uh, I love this whole segment. I love this whole thing. Uh, I loved Drew McIntyre using the what chance as a, a CM Punk thing. But most of all, I love that Drew's a hypocrite because he keeps talking about Seth Rollins being distracted, but Drew McIntyre keeps talking about CM Punk. And I think that's great business. I, I think that he's keeping that alive. That's further down the road. I think these two, Seth and Drew, are bringing out the best in each other. I think character-wise, Drew got Seth back on the serious track, even though tonight he called him funny man, which I think is a great thing for Drew in the in the heel role to refer to, to Rollins as. Uh, he's mm -hmm. also got another great T-shirt that he wore tonight. The checklist starts with injure CM Punk. I mean, that's not going away. And now, you know, Punk's back. Is it next week or the week after? I think it's next week, right? Next week. Um, next week. You know, I, I, they're going to further things. Long-term storytelling, that's not going mm -hmm. away, assuming Drew's re-signed. Um, but, but more than anything, the, the, you know, the one sentence elevator pitch here is, like I said in the beginning, I think these two are bringing out the best in each other. Uh, they're both doing their best work in quite some time, especially Drew, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Justin, I, I think this is one of those rivalries that's just getting universal uh, praise. What what were your thoughts about this time around? It was a good promo. It was a good interaction. And like John was just saying, I love the savior of WrestleMania with the McIntyre M in there. Um, you know, you know, I, I say I feel bad for Drew. I, I feel bad for Drew. I feel bad for Seth, but I feel even more bad for Drew. For Drew. You know, I, I do three hours every Sunday morning. I'll bust it open. So we have three hours to talk. And the amount of time it takes us until we finally get to Drew McIntyre, until the callers get to Drew McIntyre, kind of just speaks to the volume of where we're at here. Drew is, Drew is trying his best. When he is given the mic, when he's given the camera, or when he's on a social, he is trying his best. He's still being overshadowed. He is still fifth, sixth man down on the totem pole. <laughs> But he's trying, and 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 John just said, I hope he's resigned because we have we have a lot of interest here. What he's doing, relatively speaking, there's interest here, and God, we've you know when Punk came back to WWE, we all wanted to see Punk versus Seth. I mm -hmm. think we want to see it still, but now we really want to see Punk versus Drew. And so, if Punk's not going to be back for another six months from now, if I'm the office, and this is great leverage for Drew. I want Drew under contract when when mm. Punk's healthy again. So hopefully Drew, hopefully Drew's cashing in on that leverage, because uh, I mean he 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 he's he's busting his ass. It's just he's just he's in a stacked WrestleMania season right now. Is Drew McIntyre? I feel like if this was any other year, we'd be talking about him main yeah. event. You know, this yeah. it's it's crazy. Yeah, I agree. It's just bad timing, I guess, but. Uh, Drew's been great. Seth's been great. I've been loving that. Something that has been great for a while now. Uh, Gunther is your Intercontinental Champion. He's going to defend against Sami Zayn at WrestleMania. And uh, just they had a contract signing. Sami Zayn reminded us that, hey, I ended the longest reigning tag team streak of all time. I'm going to end the longest reigning IC championship reign of all time. You had a great a great little, uh, a great chat on your show about the inheritance of the Intercontinental Championship. I'd love for you to talk about that, and I'd love to ask you: Is Sammy the right guy? Oh, well, I appreciate the plug. Uh, well, real quick, I'll to, to, to summarize what you're referencing. Yeah, on Busted Open, I'd said uh, when you have a title reign, when you have the longest IC title reign, uh, a very historic title, mind you, when you have a title reign like that. It is very similar to the uh, Undertaker WrestleMania streak. And what I mean is, look at the Undertaker's WrestleMania streak leading up to WrestleMania 30 prior to it being uh, uh, stopped. That When you have history like that, when you have something that you can't just redo six months later, when you, when it takes, when you have something that is years, it's like an, it's an inheritance. It, it, it's like somebody having this inheritance of, of, of money and, and assets for, for somebody to, to, to gain. And you only get one shot at this. And I was very vocal about this in 2009, 2010, about Undertaker's WrestleMania streak when it became a thing. You know, people talk about all oh, Vladimir Kozlov and Ted DiBiase Jr. and all these. And I was like, guys, if they beat Taker and Taker does the job, if they don't become, if they don't then go on to have Hall of Fame careers, you've just squandered this 
amazing legends career. That's why I, I was there in New Orleans. I was okay with Brock beating. Once I digested it, I was surprised. But once I digested it, I was okay with Brock beating Taker because Brock at that point was already a Hall of Famer mm -hmm. in both WWE and UFC. He's already a surefire Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Same thing here with Gunther. Gunther has had this amazing 600 plus day longest IC title reign, the title that is known for the being the work rate title. So whoever you have beat him, you better know that they are going to continue on and have the Hall of Fame career that they should. Otherwise, you've just squandered this. I'm not suggesting that Sami Zayn is going to fall flat in the next few months. Sami Zayn's probably going to go in the Hall of Fame one day, too. But I, I don't think... I don't think he's the guy. Chad Gable, maybe six months ago. Chad Gable, when they were in Minnesota and he had his daughter front row, that might have been the, that might have been the right time. They didn't do it then. At this point, Gunther, JJ, I don't know if you agree with me. Gunther at this point is almost like Rhea Ripley to me. We have almost come so far around the sun that the crowd is starting to appreciate Gunther to an extent to where it might be. Gunther goes into Mania. He walks out of Mania, still champion. And maybe you transition him to where now he has fresh opponents that are heels because he's moved himself to the other side of the locker room. I don't have anybody right now who's positioned to beat Gunther. Maybe it'd be fun if like a veteran like Randy Orton, who's only won the IC title once. Maybe mm -hmm. a Randy Orton. Maybe an LA Knight who's got the crowd. I don't know. Maybe. But right now, maybe. I don't know. But Gunther, just, I would just keep riding with it because it doesn't feel like the it doesn't feel like the fans are fatigued with it. He continues to perform and 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 have this historic run. I, I do agree with you. I do agree with you, Justin. I'm sorry, Jack. I, yeah, I was I was hoping we would talk about this tonight because I heard your take on this earlier today myself, actually, while I was mowing the lawn, which is why I've got a little bit of sunburn going on here. But um, it was fantastic. And I've been on the fence about Gunther. Uh, but you, you turned me. You got me. And it made me think a little bit differently. You guys ran through the list of famous uh, top-notch intercontinental champions over the years. Gunther has now done so much for this title that it's not just about, is it the right time to transfer the equity? It's not just about all that. Not everybody can be in the main event picture. He's created that quote unquote division. He's turned that quote unquote division, the intercontinental title contenders. That's a good group to be in. Having a great run and working your way toward being the number one contender and losing to Gunther is just fine and is nothing to be ashamed about. And, and the guys that are getting in there and getting that opportunity, you know, uh, Chad Gable, obviously, and maybe maybe he'll, his time will come again. I also agree with you that, you know, that came and went for, for now. Uh, Sami Zayn doesn't need to win. He'll be fine. Uh, Gunther keeps moving on. And, you know, who's to say? He, I, what I was thinking previously was how much further can he go with this? What's next for him? And I, I believe I may have even written it once or twice. But why can't he just hang on to the, to the Intercontinental Championship and still – go after a world title. People have done that before or whatever the case may be. But the biggest point I think is it's just fine. He's made, he's made the whole division. It's not a, it's not a clear cut division. That's not a formal thing, but you know what I'm saying? To be in that ballpark, he's, he's created greatness and he's undeniable. And let's keep in mind whether he hold, whether he retains the IC title and then also tries to acquire a world title or whatever the case may be, you know, they have a lot of international PLEs this year. We already saw Australia. They're doing their big event in Berlin. Uh, I think it's the last day of August. Uh, now, Guther is technically from Austria, but it's a neighbor of Germany. It's, you know, Germany by de mm -hmm. by defect. So I, I have to believe he is being penciled in for being the headliner of that. So whether it's him still as Isaac champion trying to acquire a world title or whether it's whatever the situation, I have to. So just keep that in mind of. You know he he's not leaving this top picture anytime soon. He's he, he whether he's holding an IC title or whether he's chasing a world title, he's staying in the top picture in the next six months. John, I, I want you to rank in order for me. We got Rhea Ripley, Gunther, Roman Reigns. All of them left WrestleMania with their current championships last year. Rank in order: most likely to lose their title to least likely. Most likely to lose their title. Oh, uh, gosh. That's the toughest one you've asked me so far. You know what? Glad Issa's not here. <laughs> I'd say Roman. I'd say Roman Ooh. at this point. Yeah. But, but, but to, so most likely. I would say least likely. 
and maybe it's fresh in my mind. Justin's argument this morning might be good there at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not, I think, you know, one and one A and one B with with uh, he and and Rhea as as least likely. Uh, I think it speaks volumes uh, to a point Justin made earlier. Nobody's tired of any of these three though, really. So mm -hmm. that's a I've said it three times tonight. Great problem to have. Justin, last question for you on this one because I see it a lot. There's a lot of people who have said that they think Dragonoff is going to be the one that should dethrone Gunther. <laughs> You've talked about this as a big inheritance, someone who should be a uh, Hall of Famer type person. Is it the right move to have a new guy, new to the main roster guy, and maybe help him become a big name, or is that too big of a risk? Well, I mean, look, you, you groom these guys in NXT under the, pre, the, 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 the pretext of, look, these are our stars of the future. Um, I've heard Braun Breaker also. You know, mm -hmm. and, and again, it's like, oh, that, that, that's a huge, that's a huge ask. Um, Dragonoff is interesting because Dragonoff and Gunther have history. Uh, they've had a match before in NXT. Um, it, I think it was NXT UK. And so it's kind of mm -hmm. like to, to a portion of the fans, it would be brand new if they had a match on the main roster. Uh, the match they had was a banger. It was great. So, you know, that would be a calculated risk. All right, he's a guy who they have history with Gunther. It's a great match. We we know they can have a great match. Um, it's very a it's a very David versus Goliath because Dragonoff is not only he's not even six foot, so it's like a very David yeah. Goliath. Um, I consider it. Yeah, I mean, it, look, if you if, if if he's a guy who the company thinks if Dragonoff's a guy who the company thinks is somebody they want around, if he's doing all the right things, that would be a situation of all right. How can we make this five foot ten Russian guy? How can we make him? <laughs> A big deal. Let's have him dethrone Gunther after this 660 plus day historic run. So yeah, that is something. And again, I go back to the international thing. I think if I have under if I know Dragonoff's history, he's Russian born, but I think he actually immigrated to Germany. So again, I go back to the yeah. I go back to the Berlin P. I'm just booking the Berlin PLE tonight. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. No, I mean th th there's 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 potential there, but it all comes with risk. But it's calculated risk, and and Dragunov might be the most most calculated because again, you know he and Guther can put it on in the ring. Uh, you would just need to do all the uh, WWE things, which is give me all the video packages of who Dragunov is, give me all of the set me the table, do all those things. Don't pull an AEW where you expect me to know to be a, and be a freaking Google Meister of knowing who everybody is. You've got to spell it out to me. Who is this guy? Why do I care about him? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, there, I, I'm excited. I'm excited about all of it. I, I agree with you guys. I like, I like all three of them still. So we'll see how it plays out. But we had three contendership matches, John, for a, to join the six pack challenge for the tag team championships. Uh, awesome. Truth go through DIY go through and the new day go through. Um, any takeaways from these these teams here? Any thoughts or of the matches or the teams uh, from this set of matches? Uh, this is a cop out. Love DIY. Don't like the new music. Uh, that's mm -hmm. one takeaway. <laughs> Sorry, love those guys. Glad, really glad to see them get uh, their first mini opportunity, and I'm glad it's together uh, as well. Um, new day, tried and true, reliable veterans to put in a car crash of a match like that. You know what you're getting there. Uh, and then awesome truth. I mean, respect the Miz, absolutely, but really glad that our truth has some has a WrestleMania uh, moment to be had coming up here. Hopefully, he'll remember it's WrestleMania and not what you know whatever else he might end up at instead. Um, but happy to see that. And I thought the finish of that match was 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 pretty darn funny too. So um, very happy with with all these results. Looking forward to that match. And if Justin's booking it. He's going to Germany. Yeah, he's going. Yeah, he's going. He's, a, he, he's in the U.S. tour for Germany. Well, remember, at least we're not booking WrestleMania 55 anymore. At least this yeah, one's right. a little closer. Real quick, I want to shout out uh, WWE production. I love the they followed Sammy. Yeah, they followed Sammy Zayn mm -hmm. out. Yep, through Gorilla through the backstage. He's all upset, and this is all like one continuous shot. And then the camera, you know, kept with awesome truth through Gorilla through the curtain. 
Uh, if you, I know if you're listening to this podcast and you didn't watch Raw, you're maybe saying Labar. That's like such a trivial, stupid thing. What, what does that mean? Just go watch it. It was just such a, cool. in a three in a three hour show. It's just a great way to break up the monotony of how we transition from segment to segment. I, I just for, for being a traditional TV guy, my de- my degrees in television, I thought that was just a great, great little piece of work. Go watch it. Yep. And uh, I want to add too, just how difficult that timing must have been because it's one shot you get one chance at it you know right. and it's for everyone to get their their hit everyone hit their line it seemed like it anyways if they missed it they covered it up well enough it was yeah. it was great the whole thing was great so it was a it was a good fellas enter through the kitchen type of situation right in the wrestling yeah world. yep yeah it was it's got to be so stressful and to, it took like, them like 40 it took them like 42 takes to get that one right yeah yeah so to be told, like, you got one shot at this, Sammy's coming through the curtain, and you got to go, and you got to have your conversation, hit your lines, hit your points, and get out there for the music. Just crazy. Good good stuff. A um, couple last things before we wrap up. Andrade possibly joining the Judgment Day. Ricochet stock going up. He's getting wins. And Candice LeRae is becoming a little meanie. Uh, John, anything you'd like to uh, – to add on these last little bits before we wrap up love to see uh heel candace loray perhaps uh the poison pixie rocking and rolling looking good to me like the uh mm-hmm. confusion on indy's part does she like it does she not um they're getting some wins but does she agree with it great for ricochet to build some steam for sure i think andrade uh teasing andrade with the judgment day is probably a prelude to some post mania stuff uh mm-hmm. getting those those guys together slowly working him into some secondary storylines here. Can't wait to see more of them in the ring. Uh, big fan of Andrade's work, but I don't mind this the slow play either. And I think it's great to set things up for the future. And uh, yeah, Justin, any thoughts on the uh, on that stuff that happened? I'll just note. I, I really can't add anything more to the other stuff. I'll, I'll just note Candice LeRae. This is the most, but based upon last week, what she did with um, with Maxine, uh, mm-hmm. and this week with. I mean, this is the most. Candice LeRae, you know. Uh, you know, to, to Triple H's credit, he he really has tried to get more female talent, you know, bo- you know, just signed and booked and everything. But you know, to stand out isn't a whole other thing. And Candice LeRae really kind of fell in the crowd for a long time. She kind of just—I mean, she's not the she's not the biggest from a physical standpoint. She's not just visually. She's not the most interesting. I, um, that's just a honest critique. But this, the past two weeks have made me all of a sudden go, "Ooh, what's Candice doing?" Now I want to see now next week when her match comes, I will not use that match to pause and get up and go to the bathroom or get a drink or whatever. I am going to be focused in listening to that match of what is she doing? What is she saying? So you got me. I am interested now in Candice LeRae in this shift in her character in this heel turn. So good on them. Yeah. And I like the nuance of they're not both in on it. She she's right changing and indy hates it but they're winning so it's also i like they're playing the i'm sure indy's in that like what do i do because she's right but at the same time i'm not happy about it so right yeah. those are the kind of relationships that are interesting i think in this situation and so, in story in storyline indy's always looked up to her so that that conflict mm-hmm. of interest will be interesting to, to see it play out it's gonna reap uh, it's gonna put her in position to reap some benefits from it too well, I, that was this was a very fun show. I like I said, I felt like this was the filling the gaps show of uh, Raw. I felt like it filled in a lot of stories and a lot of stuff that's going on. Uh, but everyone in the chat, thank you for joining us. Baby Ice, Majestic Marie, Kier Kemp, Jimmy Cordare is still with us here. Blue Chew, good fella. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, let's go around the horn. And John, any final thoughts on the show? And where can the world find you online and all the stuff you're working on? I love the show. Uh, I thought it was the best draw in a while. Uh, certainly a nice uh, step back up from a SmackDown that I thought was a little bit disappointing on Friday overall. I uh, had a great time. Uh, the world can find me uh, on Twitter, X, Xter, whatever it's called, at John Jordan, <laughs> no H. Uh, and then uh, on Wrestling Inc., uh, Google Wrestling Inc., John Jordan. Again, no H. You'll find all kinds of stuff there, not just the news, like I said in the beginning, but also a bunch of features and uh, some cool stuff we're doing over there. Also, I would like to shout out Jimmy Corderas myself. Uh, who dropped me a very nice note today. Didn't have to do that. Uh, I filled in for him tonight. Really, really appreciate that. And I do hope uh, that we get to work together sometime soon too. So thank you guys as well, both for welcoming, welcoming me. Of course, man. And Jimmy Corderas is the best. It's, he's the, the kindest person you'll ever meet. Uh, 
Justin, you're not the kindest person I'll ever meet because that's Jimmy, <laughs> but I appreciate getting to, to work with you as well. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, uh, I'm overall. a heel. I'm a heel through and through. You can't trust me. <laughs> can't trust me. I'll I'll I'll, I'll back you. You are the Candice LeRae to my Indy Hartwell, Justin. <laughs> no, that's not the best compliment you could have gave me. But all right. Well. <laughs> but <laughs> you're right. I can't, I can't think of a better. I maybe can't maybe, I'm, maybe I'm Dom and you're Rio. <laughs> okay, I'll take that too. Uh, but. Uh, what uh what are where can we we'll find you at overall thoughts on this show? <laughs> no, nah, it was a good raw. It was. Uh we're on the road to Mania. They're putting their best foot forward. So good raw. Uh again, you know, I'm excited about Raw. I'm excited about SmackDown. A lot of stuff to look forward to. Uh follow me on uh across social media at Justin Labar. Um I have my interview with Bianca Belair that's out there from last week. There's clips from Busted Open, which every Friday I'm on Busted Open throughout the morning with Dave, Thunder Rosa, Nick Nemeth, whoever <laughs> whoever draws a short straw for Friday. Uh, every Sunday, myself, Jonathan Hood, hosting the entire three hours. That's a great time. Uh, I busted open Sirius XM Channel 156 or the Sirius XM app or the Sirius XM podcast. Uh, all kinds of good stuff. We're hosting Busted Open both Saturday and Sunday mornings of WrestleMania weekend. So a lot of big stuff happening there. But, of course, every Monday here on Wrestling Inc. Podcast uh, with the crew that we have here, which is really fun because – Busted Open's fun, great doing that, but this is fun because we do it's, it's it's an immediate reaction. So immediate reaction, live chat, that's a whole different kind of format, uh, which I really appreciate and, and I enjoy working with all of you guys. So um whatever your whatever your fancy is, tune in. And of course, you can find me at Real Jack Farmer across all social media. You can check me out here on Mondays or on Wednesdays covering AEW. Uh so a little bit of everything here, but that does it for us again. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Give everyone here a follow. And um, check out all of Wrestling Inc. stuff. Follow at Wrestling Inc. for all the latest news. And make sure to tune in tomorrow for the NXT After Show podcast. We'll see you there. And until next time, I'm hitting the button that says end stream.